Dear colleagues, welcome to this introductory lecture. This video is prepared for absolute beginners who have no or minimal practice with executing thyroid ultrasound examination. It is worth stopping the performance in several places so that we can delve into the figures. Another option is to revisit some important pages of the PDF version after the presentation. The goal of this lecture is to give help to become able to execute an ultrasound examination on your own. But before discussing the execution, we have to speak about the anatomy of the thyroid and the projection of the anatomical structures on ultrasound. The thyroid is located under the thyroid cartilage between the trachea and the carotid artery. The two lobes surround the trachea ventral and are joined with the isthmus between the lower parts of the lobes. Thyroid parenchyma is occasionally found between the upper level of the lobes. This is called lobus pyramidale. The horizontal section of the thyroid is presented in the image. Two anatomical structures are of help in identifying the thyroid gland. These are the left and right carotid artery and the trachea. The ultrasound weight cannot pass through the cartilaginous wall of the lateral, therefore dorsal to the trachea there is a dark band. The two lobes of the thyroid are located between the arteries and the trachea. As in this case, the right lobe is usually larger than the left one. For the very beginners, it is very important to understand what we see. The picture presented by the ultrasound is not a real photo. It is a section image. The transverse section of the right lobe is demonstrated in this image. Similarly to a photo, structures located indeed on the right side of the object can be found left in the image and conversely. And again, similarly to a photo, objects located indeed on the left can be seen right in the image. In contrast with the conventional photograph, the upper part of the ultrasound image corresponds to the ventral, while the lower part of the image corresponds to the dorsal part of the projected figure. So the upper part of an ultrasound image in transfer scan corresponds to the skin, while the lower part of the ultrasound image reflects deeper structures. In this case, the deepest means 4 cm distance from the level of skin. If we analyze a longitudinal scan, then the upper part of the object is projected in the left side of the image, while the lower part of the object can be seen in the right side of the ultrasound image. Similarly to the transfer section, upper part of an ultrasound picture corresponds to the skin, while the lower part of the ultrasound image reflects deeper structures, in this case the deepest means 4 cm distance from the level of skin. In other words, structures in one end of the probe appear always on the same side of the projected image, it is in the left or in the right side irrespectively of the positioning of the transducer. But the upper part of the image reflects anatomical structures located ventrally, while the lower part of the image reflects structures located dorsally. Irrespectively of the position of the transducer in relation to the anatomical structures, the upper to lower direction in the image means a direction from the skin towards dorsal figures. For those who have been never analyzed ultrasound images, it requires some time to digest the above discussed relation between the real object and the projected image. When you will make the ultrasound examination, the understanding will become much easier. We have to perform an ultrasound examination compulsory in two perpendicular sections. In horizontal scanning we start with the investigation above the thyroid and move downward with the transducer. In an enlarged thyroid we have to repeat this procedure several times in order to visualize the whole thyroid. Thereafter we rotate the probe squarely and move from lateral to medial. Now we move on the second part of the lecture. Naturally, if you have a mentor who sacrifices 30 to 60 minutes to teach you the basics, you are in a good situation. However, even in this case, it's worth listening to this lecture so you know what to look out for. 
there are three steps to follow. I will talk about these in detail, now I will just summarize these steps. The first is to find the thyroid in transfer scan. It means that the ultrasound probe is perpendicular to the patient's neck. You may require half an hour to practice safely how to find the thyroid in transfer scan. Let me ask you to examine first only the right lobe of the thyroid. The next step is to find the thyroid in longitudinal scan when the transducer is parallel with the patient's neck. I ask you again to examine only the right lobe. It is more difficult to examine a patient in longitudinal scan than in transverse view, and to learn how to find the thyroid in longitudinal scan requires the ability of transverse scanning. So don't hurry. Don't save time for the first phase. If you follow this suggestion, 30 minutes will take to learn how to execute the longitudinal scanning and how to find the thyroid in this section. The third step is to examine the left lobe in transverse and in longitudinal sections. The principles are exactly the same, but it is more difficult to examine the left lobe because this lobe is further away. If you are past the first three phases, you may want to learn a few techniques. These are enlisted in the table. This is the phase where you should be familiar with the basic settings as well. Up to this point, it was not worth dealing with. The conditions of the first ultrasound examination are enlisted in this table. I highlight two of these. The first thing is that you need a helper. If she or he is an experienced examiner, then you have a case one. Not everyone is so lucky, but in this case too, nothing is lost. One of the main roles of the helper is to help maintain the integrity of the probe. A bad move can cause serious damage. The other point is to become familiar with the very basic settings of the equipment. You need to ask and note how to turn the machine on and off, how to freeze an image. And one more thing is important at the start. The default setting should be small part or thyroid. These should be learned if you are doing your first exam without an expert and should learn before you call the first person to evaluate. The next two tables summarize the preparations for the first examination. I do not want to read what was written. You can pause or rewound the video at any time to read them. During the examination you should protect both the equipment and the patient. The former has been already discussed. Regarding the protection of the patient, it is to be avoided to cause great pressure. A novice will surely sometimes press the head against the patient's neck harder than necessary. It is worth speaking in advance so that if the patient experiences discomfort, should speak up. A simple advice. If the visualization is not good, it is not the pressure exerted that is small, but the amount of the jam. Some thoughts about the preparation to an ultrasound examination. The patient should lie down. The neck should be a bit emerged. For this purpose, a cylindrical pillow with around 10 cm diameter is used. The gel is water-based, so the cloth of the patient should be protected from flooding. At the very beginning, it is advised to work in a relatively light room. The basic settings are worth to use. It means that the small parts or the thyroid should be chosen. The details of the three tabs are enlisted in this table and the next tables. I do not want to read it. You can download the slides from the website and print these suggestions before the first examination. You may pause the video now in order to look into the details. So let's see a video. First we apply an abandoned gel to the patient's neck. During the examination we may need to apply gel again. Then we place the probe high on the neck in transverse position. Try pushing the probe a little harder and ask the patient to tell you when the pressure is uncomfortable. We look at the probe 
and move slowly down and then up in a few times. This is to avoid having to look at the transducer too often during the test. Now place the transducer high on the neck, surely above the upper pole of the thyroid. And now slowly move the probe down. First pay attention to the two anatomical reference points, the carotid artery and the trachea. The thyroid should appear between them. If the thyroid has appeared, then slow even down the move of the probe until you reach the lower pole. And now make the same movement backward. It is unlikely to succeed at first. Try again from the beginning. Many times the problem is that the probe slides sideways while moving down. Try to keep the transducer right to the center line, but very close to the center line while moving down. You've gotten past the first step if you can successfully resolve the transfer scanning again by following the movement on the monitor all the time after placing the probe on the neck and you don't feel the need to check the position of the transducer on the patient's neck. Now you can move on to the second step. First a simple technique. Place the probe in the middle part of the thyroid where it is the broadest. First look at the probe and turn slowly by 90 degrees clockwise. Now rotate from the longitudinal position back to the transverse position. Repeat this several times. This is to avoid having to look at the transducer too often during the test. Now look at the monitor and find the broadest section of the lobe in transfer scanning. Now fix the probe and start with the rotation very slowly clockwise. Thereafter back counterclockwise. If the thyroid gland has disappeared from the monitor, start over. The goal is to be able to rotate the probe 90 degrees so that the thyroid tissue remains visible on the monitor throughout. If you have been able to successfully reverse it back and forth several times, you may want to try placing the probe on the side beyond the thyroid gland longitudinal and slowly moving it inward. Meanwhile, look at the monitor to detect when the thyroid tissue appears. Repeat it several times, starting at the upper third, then in the middle third, then in the lower third of the lobe. If you can safely find the right lobe of the thyroid gland in longitudinal section as well, looking at the monitor all the way, you may want to move on phase 3. That is to examine the left lobe. The principles are the same, only the difficulty level is higher. Now a few words about the basic settings. As I mentioned earlier, to examine the thyroid, depending on the equipment used, you should choose the small parts or thyroid as examination type. There are three things to be aware of initially. Adjusting the depth, the focus and the resolution. First about the depth. You may want to change the depth in two cases. First in large thyroid. The depth should be adjusted to see the most dorsal part of the lobe. In certain patients you may want to see an enlarged view of the nodule. Then you can manipulate again with the depth. The second is the proper adjustment of the focus. If it is set wrongly then the image quality of the dorsal part of the lobe becomes worse. It is worth setting this along with the depth right at the beginning of the test, by adjusting the focus to the deepest part of the lobe. The third setting relies on the resolution of the image. As a basic rule, better the resolution, worse the penetrance of the ultrasound wave and conversely. In an average patient, we can apply the best resolution. In large goiters, in obese patients and in those whose tissues are more difficult to pass through the ultrasound wave, typically in elderly patients, we need to let go of better resolution so that the thyroid gland is better penetrated by the ultrasound, it is, we should change the setting from resolution to general or penetrance. 
Finally, some techniques we should learn and practice. The first is the identification of the esophagus. It can be found in most cases dorsal to the left lobe. You can see now the esophagus dorsal and medial to the lower pole of the thyroid lobe. On transfer scan, the presentation of the esophagus is frequently misleading. It mimics a hypoechoic nodule. However, longitudinal section decides the issue. The esophagus as a pipe-like structure runs along in longitudinal scan. Initially, the location of the esophagus should be observed in all patients in order to become familiar with its ultrasound presentation. The carotid artery is another anatomical structure which is worth examining initially. This is one of the two anatomical reference points and it is easy to identify, at least in transfer scan. Now try to follow the course of the vessel upward in longitudinal section. This is presented in the video. The final exam is to identify the lower pole of the thyroid. On the one hand, its identification is mandatory for all thyroid ultrasound examinations. On the other hand, examination of the lower pole during swallowing also helps to learn how not to lose the thyroid gland on the monitor when the patient performs involuntary esophageal movement. Now the lower pole is demonstrated in normal position. We ask the patient to swallow. The thyroid moves upward during swallowing and thereafter moves back to its normal place. That's the end of it and you are done. If you can do these four steps safely, you will thrive on your own from now on. Experience shows that after the initial low feel clumsiness and then the successful completion of each step, there is often a temporary relapse. If you experience this, don't get bitter. It's up to you the amount of practice to get ahead. Some are smarter, who may be able to move on after even an hour or two of practice. Net 8 to 10 hours is enough for most people to do this. If you were very clumsy, like me, twice that much time would surely be enough. One more thing. 8 times 3 hours of practice is worth much more than 3 times 8 hours of practice. Perhaps the hardest part is realizing and keeping in mind that what you see is not like a regular photograph, but a projection. The meaning of up and down and the meaning of right and left side is different in a projection than in a real image. But again, it's up to you. Good luck!